Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here and welcome back to another Division video. And in today's video, I want to speak to you guys about a new gear set, the Banshee set. Now this is new in inverted commas because it's actually a repurposed or the repurposed blind set. So some of you guys may know in the PTS 1.4, they're of course rebalancing and changing some of the gear sets, some of the bonuses and whatnot. And the ultimate aim for that is to create a kind of much tighter set of gear sets that each offer something unique. And while I appreciate the blind set did have something that the other ones didn't, it wasn't for some reason kind of suitable for purpose. So the Banshee set is now a PvP rogue set. Now, before you guys jump to conclusions and be like, well, hold on a minute, why are you giving something to the rogues to help them out? Because some people out there might hate PvP. Just hear it out because this is actually a really interesting set. And it's one of those things where, yes, if you have no interest in PvP, you don't really care about the Dark Zone, then this set is for the most part not going to be that interesting to you. However, it does still have some rather interesting set bonuses. So in this video, we are going to take a quick look at it. I jumped into the PTS today on stream for a couple of hours, managed to farm all the pieces I needed to complete the set. So let's take a look at it. If you do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. But to begin with, as mentioned, this replaced the blind set, so the blind icon is still there. But your two-piece set bonus for this is plus 20% looted Dark Zone funds. I.e. you get 20% more Dark Zone funds when you are in the Dark Zone. And while I appreciate if you think about that as the game currently stands, that sounds useless because truth be told, there's not really anything useful in the Dark Zone. Bear in mind that in 1.4, they are going to be introducing new blueprints and there will be level 33 blueprints and stuff that is applicable to your gear score. So once again, the Dark Zone vendors will actually have use. So Dark Zone currency will once again be something that you're after. So that's pretty cool. Means while you're farming, you're out and about killing things and whatnot, then you're getting more currency. As for your three piece set bonus, you then get plus 10% damage to targets out of cover. Now this is not just in the Dark Zone. While this is Technically speaking, a set designed for Dark Zone and PvP, this perk works no matter where you are. So, even if you are not interested in PvP, you might consider grabbing this for a three-piece, because when you think about typical engagements with NPCs, most of the time they don't actually use cover. They might stand by cover, but they're not in cover. So a lot of the time, you're actually going to be able to proc this bonus and take advantage of that 10%, which is really cool. And of course, in most Dark Zone battles, if you're out there PvPing, I'm sure you are very much aware that most people tend to run around each other in circles, so again, you're not in cover. So, that is a pretty nice three-piece, and I think that's something that might well draw a lot of people to this set. It could well have some interesting combinations. I'm sure there'll be lots of kind of interesting 3-3 or 3-2-1 sets out there, so this is something to keep your eye on. Now, as for the four-piece set bonus, this is going to change slightly, but let's go over it as it currently stands. So, it's actually got two different modes, depending on the state you're in. If you are rogue, then... Every 30 seconds, it completely refills your ammo. Now, this is important because, of course, if you're rogue and you're trying to survive a manhunt, then you can't go into the checkpoint, meaning you can't go and restock, meaning if you run out of ammo, there's very little you can do. And while I appreciate, again, some of you guys might not be a fan of the rogue mechanic, you need to realise that not every single person out there goes rogue to be a griefer. Some people just do it because they enjoy PvP or whatever means it is. So if someone happens to be manhunt and they're running around, then they also need an equal chance to survive. On top of that, whilst also in the rogue status, damage taken from non-rogue players is reduced by 10%. Now, 10% isn't a huge margin, but it's a token that basically means, again, if you happen to be rogue and you are trying to run away and you're trying to survive, then you'll just have a little bit more protection. And again, remember, this isn't going to be like a drastic amount. It's not like you're giving them 100% more health. 10% reduction, while noticeable, is not going to be like a second health bar or like an armor bar. On the flip side, this set bonus has an alternate option. If you are not rogue, then your movement speed is increased by 20%. However, this is actually going to be changed, and I'll speak about that in a second. And also, your damage to rogue players is increased by 10%. So, if you look at this set for a minute and you just think about it, if you are wearing the set and you're hunting a rogue that is not wearing this set, maybe they're using a finely tuned sentry build, a striker build, a firecrest build, it doesn't really matter. If they're using something that is not this build, then you are doing more damage to rogues. So in that situation, if you are a rogue hunter, then you're actually going to have an advantage. On the flip side, if you are someone that does do PvP a lot and you do like to go rogue, then wearing this set will basically help with your survivability. Again, not to the point where you become an impenetrable force, but it will still help you out. Now, as for the kind of movement speed thing, that is unfortunately going to be taken out because as it currently stands, there are technical limitations as to why this can't work. Basically, 
when you're running through large areas in the city, the game has to stream in. And if you're running 20% faster, then the game can't keep up. And eventually you'll get a point where the game isn't streaming in and you're running into nothingness. And as cool as that sounds, it's just not viable for gameplay. So what you can see here, there is a lot of fun to be had running around like a crazy man, super fast all the time. And I do love this. And as you can see, if I run side by side with 269, I can catch him up in a race. Unfortunately, this is going away. So one thing they did say on today's State of the Game is that they are open to suggestions because they're looking for something to replace this thing. Now, an idea that I had, spoke about this with some of you guys on stream, but if you think about the logic or the design philosophy behind giving someone 20% movement speed when they're not rogue, the idea is that if you are trying to take out rogues, then maybe if they're running away from you, typically they're ahead. And sometimes you do get into those situations where they might run through some enemies, they run through a building, they might take a shortcut, whatever it is, sometimes you will lose them. And given that the map is not really that useful, you know, rogues pulse on and off at times time, but they're not there all the time. So again, it makes it quite hard to track. Then the idea behind movement speed is allowing you to catch up to them, which is cool. But if that's not a possibility, then perhaps one idea could be that the other bonus is if you're not rogue, then you have like a permanent map, which shows the locations of all rogues on the map, either permanent or maybe it pulses every now and then. But when you think about it, like a typical Dark Zone session, if I jump in and I see someone who's gone rogue, I open the map, I look for that pulse, I try and run to that location, and by the time you're there, they've moved. And a lot of the time, the map is just not that useful because the pulses can be pretty infrequent paired with the fact that some people use conceal. Generally speaking, unless you're in the vicinity of those rogues, it can actually be quite hard to lock them down. So if the idea behind this is that if you're not rogue, you're gonna use it to hunt rogues, then maybe a means to track them via a kind of much more reliable permanent map tracker could be a really good idea. Another idea someone came up with on Twitter was what if, say, you die while in a non-rogue state, the other bonus is that you drop slightly less loot. Because of course you could argue that if you're being killed by rogues and you're dying, then maybe you're not trying to go rogue, maybe you're just trying to go about your business doing some PvE stuff, and maybe you don't really want to be griefed on. Then of course if they're kind of constantly killing you, taking your loot, then it can get frustrating. So maybe a set bonus that reduces the loot that you drop provided you're not rogue would then mean that in situations like that where you are griefed, then you don't lose quite so much. Obviously if you're rogue, that's not active, so you still lose everything you have but that is a possible idea. Or you could even go as far as to say or sort of provide some kind of conceal for non-rogue players. That way, again, if you're being hunted by rogues, then it's hard for them to track you on the map in the same way that if you're trying to track them through a not very reliable pulsing location on a map, then they could similarly struggle on the flip side. Now, to be honest, we haven't really got a solution for that just yet. And I'm going to kind of think about some things that might work slightly better. If you have any ideas, by all means, put them in the comments down below, because right now Massive are listening. They are all ears for an alternative for this. So I'm going to try and sort of think of some other suggestions that may well be useful. But for the time being, that was a quick look at the Banshee armor set. So this replaces the blind gear set. So if you have any blind gear set pieces in your inventory, then when 1.4 goes live, they will become Banshee pieces. There will be no more blind in this game whatsoever. So if you're logging onto the PTS and you have blind sets, then you already have a Banshee set. And if you don't have it and you want to go and farm it, then jump into things like the underground. That's where I farm my one. You can now buy caches. So you can go and buy things like gear set caches, open them, try and get them from there. Wherever you want to go, those are some of the options, but that is pretty much it. Now the patch notes themselves for things like the 1.4 things do tend to change on a relatively frequent basis, so I'm trying to sort of catch up on them at the moment. I've got a video coming tomorrow where I'm going to speak to you guys more in depth about the remaining gear set changes for the other sets, and of course I've got a few more videos planned over the weekend to speak about different aspects of the game. So I figured instead of kind of just breaking down on the patch notes, I'll just try and sort of show you guys aspects in game. Now that I'm actually jumping on the PTS, I still don't have a fully level character myself, but I am in a much better position with the character that I do have, so I can actually try and show you guys some stuff. Either way, that's it for the time being. Thank you for watching. If you guys have any questions, by all means, let me know down below. Of course, let me know your thoughts on the set. But until next time, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.